a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Hey, who Name did another this? podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm Money Mose, by the way. And we create content every damn day. Hey, man. What's going on, man? Hey, man. We got a special guest today, man. Uh, this brother right here don't need no introduction, man. Uh, he been everywhere doing everything here lately. I don't know where he come from. Like he just come out of nowhere, to be honest with you, man. I did. Man, did my boy. Hey, my boy Charlie Lowe Jr. is in the building, man. Man, what's happening, man? It's a pleasure to be here. I thank y'all for having me. Hey, man. Boy, when I look at I, I just think about your dad. I ain't gonna lie, man. That's the first thing you said. Yeah. <laughs> I, I ain't never seen you in my life. I knew you Charlie Lowe Jr. I knew it. He probably get that a lot, man. So, man, what's up, man? Uh, uh, I, I want to say you from Bowen Home, but... Right. Is that correct? Right. Because I, I really didn't know if you grew up over there. Mm-hmm. But just just give me a rundown on who you are and, and kind of how, how how it all began. Oh, um, like how it all began with me doing with you? Music. No, no, with you just coming up as a kid. Oh, well. Oh, we go all the way back. Okay, all the way back. You know, <laughs> all right, man. Charlotte Lowe Jr., a.k.a. Harlow's Walker. You know, my dad is who he is. Charlotte Lowe, Bankhead, Born Homes. You know, all that. And. That that's me, Bankhead, Born Homes. Um, I moved to the south side of Atlanta when I was like, let's say twelve, thirteen. That's Old National, Hollis Park area. Um, just growing up like with a father and a mom like that because they, they really both hustle. You know, my mom yeah. used to kind of work for dad. Okay. So um, just just being around that, you know, just being with. My dad and he hustled, and you know, just in born homes, you know, they had it trapped out all day, like all day long. Man, we had um the th- three shifts, you know, it was three eight hour shifts, so it was people, you know, it was a different set, and they just used to come through all day. And sometimes we didn't even get the the kids, we there, and we don't even get to go home. So you know, it's been there three, four, five in the morning. Nud and all falling asleep, man. Like, hey, bro, when we going home, man? Ain't no going home, man. On that, we here for the night. <laughs> Just you know, that sound like him too. That the crazy <clears throat> part is, 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 is the age you saying that they were going down at, and I know because I used to hustle too, so I get it. So you were actually in the midst, like you seen the you seen the drugs, or you oh, seen yeah, yeah. you seen what was the popping. money counter, all the that. money counter. Oh. You, you knew that sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to tell you, like, it was crazy. You know? Yeah, so so when you seen it first, you you felt like it, you know, because I heard him say something one time. He said I was getting so much money. He said I was getting. I thought everybody was getting. Like he was saying, I getting a hundred thousand at a time. He said I thought everybody was doing it because I was doing it. I felt that when he said it. So you seen all of this going on? I'm seeing it, man. As a kid, you know, um, like around the ages is four, five, six, and seven and stuff like that. So I'm seeing it, but you know, as a kid, you don't really know what's going no. on. But you seeing yeah, it, you but you don't normal. know. You yeah, you think it's normal. Yeah. Like you, yeah, so you thinking this is normal, but it's really not. And so you seeing all the cars and all every, everything. you in the cars. You in get. the cars, around the women. Like, you know, I done been in the hood, like, playing football, like, with the neighborhood kids and stuff. And then, you know, I, I see my dad coming around the corner running. And then after that, got I see the police coming around the corner, too. So, but I seen him on his phone, and, and it was a lady came outside. So, so he was running, and she came outside, and he ran to her house. So when the police came around the corner, she was like, "He ran that way," but he really ran in the house. So he had to call her. I was like, "Look at this!" I'm like, "What is this? Like a movie?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, no, nah, for real. Like, man, so I seen a lot drive-bys. I don't see people get shot, killed. Like Jay's at the door, like all type of stuff. Like, man, so, I, I'm seeing it all. Did, so, what got you in the sports? Because you you ended up playing football um, early yeah. on. Okay, yeah, okay, so my mom, she used to hustle, you know, too, but, um, you know, and I was always good at football, and, you know, I was always just, you know, just around the neighborhood playing football, basketball, and basketball, when I was young, so I used to suck, but on um, football, I was the truth. You was a dog, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I was the truth, so, you know, um, my mom had met this guy, and, um, and, um, he made like kind of helped her change her life and she, she turned over to God and you know and I seen how she was struggling you know like, like sometimes we really have food or this or that or whatever the case may be so I told her I say mom I'm going to, to the lead you know what I mean so I'm gonna take yeah, care of you yeah yeah so you know that was just my passion and my dream at the time 
So, you know, I, I just stayed focused with it. And, you know, um, high school, college, um, I was, I actually was talking to um, Georgia State and Sam Houston and stuff, but my, my senior year, excuse me, my senior year, I, I hurt my own um, back. So, you know, and people were like, you know, I just want to see if you can still play. So I went to um, a junior college in Cali. But then when I came back for Thanksgiving break, that was 2012, that's when I got in trouble and I didn't go back. So, and, and the crazy part is, how was it like when you were growing up and you went to playing football and everybody knew you was, you was Charlie Lowe's son, mm -hmm. um, did that open doors for you or did that cause issues for you? Um... I mean, like, I ain't showing this nigga no favoritism because he's short and low son. Or See, but that was actually good, though. Like, my, my um, coaches and stuff, you know, they was hard on me j just like they were hard on everybody else's kid because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out here. So they going to push me to be great and have that mindset, you know, just like everybody else, you know. So I ain't get no favoritism. It was like sometimes, like, when, like when I, I was playing bad and stuff and they'll take me out of the game and, my dad and my mom at the game. I'm like, Coach, we need to put me in the game. He was like, I don't care because your dad up there. I don't care about him being shot low. Shit, you finna sit right here. And wow. I, and, and it really, like, damn, shit hurt me. So I look back and my dad watching. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, man. You done but got so, yourself in the jam. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So, so you know, but like, you got stuff like that, you know. That, but, builds, that builds integrity and ethics too, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that made me want to work harder, get better, you know, because. I wanted my parents to see me do good and, you know, shine and stuff. So it just made me f focus more, too. What about the, your siblings, man? Did any one of the other ones play football? No, nah, um, I only got one older uh, brother. Older brother, okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, he did he do what he do. Um, he, he had been doing music since he was th 13 and everything, you know, but I don't know if he really ever took it. Serious? Serious, yeah. I, well, when I see you, you know, I just I just uh, know that um, the things that God got pre prepared for you, bro, ain't no telling where, where it's going. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about it. What you think about it, uh, Money Moses? I want to know what's the best thing that you that you got from your daddy when he was selling drugs that made you think positive. Like, I'm not gonna do this. Yeah, what, I mean, what was the best thing that came to your mind? Like, I'm not gonna do this. I I'm mean, because as a kid, you know, you know, you know what's good and. Well, what's bad, but you you might don't know what's going on, but you know what's what is good yeah. and what's bad. So like, I see him getting chased by the police. I seen him shooting at people. I said I don't see people get shot and die. I was like, man, you know, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. You know, you know good gosh, I want to be different. You got I mean, you know, I want to help people and I want to just be good and have somebody proud of me. You know, and in that aspect. Not saying that people wasn't proud of my dad, but, you know, he was doing what he, he was doing, but he was doing it for a good reason. Yeah. Like, so he took care of the neighborhood. Like, like he paying the whole hood rent. Like, taking care of everybody. You know what I mean? So he was doing what he was doing, but it was for good, though. Yeah. yeah but, you it know. Ain't, it, ain't, it ain't good in the, uh, in the other folks' eyes. You know? Right. No, no it, it ain't. ain't. It ain't you know, like it's, it's always a good thing for us because we see it, but it's like once it, how they look at it, it's like you doing too much. You taking care of the hood, like they don't want that to see. They don't want to see you do good anyway, so they gonna make a way for you to be. I agree with that. Yeah, they gonna make a way for you to be in the hood. I see the D four L change, man. I remember back when I didn't even know who Charlie Lowe was. I really, I just seen them niggas just doing the dance, and you know, I ain't, I ain't seen Charlie Lowe in none of that. I'm being real. I didn't, he mm -hmm. was on the backside when that was going on, right? And I was like, dang, man, he was in jail then. Well, was he in jail? Prison then yeah. he was in prison then, mm -hmm. but he still he started it. Right, that's crazy. How did that? Okay, how did that start out? Uh, and, and and I don't know the history of it, but how did that? From your perspective, how did it? You say he was in jail then. How did they even get that off the ground? And then how did he orchestrate that? Why he was locked up? Well, basically, my dad was my dad was already a millionaire before he even started rapping or doing anything. Just out street money, you know. My, my dad said that that um he seen his first million by the time I think he was seventeen. Yeah, eighteen. So you know, uh, so he was already kingpin already. So you know, he was just looking for ways to in best his money, you know, to help his people. And that's when he started um, the um, studio, um, the D4L studio. And, you know, he was investing his money into his group, you know, um, Stuntman, Fabo, um, Front Street, you know, all of those people that y'all seen. And um, so basically they was already working and stuff, but, you know, he had got locked Jammed up. up yeah. Right. So, so then when 
that happened, you know, that they were just still doing they they thing or whatever. So, you know, they made um Laffy Taffy and they had played it for him like over the phone. And 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 then, you know, dad was like, No, nah, I don't like that. I don't know about that one. But you know, they end up being one of the biggest songs, <laughs> if not the biggest song. It was big, man. It changed culture a lot of in a mm-hmm. lot of ways, bro. Mm-hmm. So, um, how old were you then? Um You was young. Yeah, um, I was still staying on the west side when that song came out. So I was probably around like ten or eleven. Eleven, yeah, yeah. So because the, the, that was around like the two thousand three, two thousand four era, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. So okay, so you you now I'm, I'm fast forwarding a little bit, but um, well, during that era when he first came out and then they, that got to going, he started doing his own solo deal. And when he started doing his solo deal, him and Ti ended up uh, having uh, 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 issues about was he from born home? Did you even understand what was going on in that whole thing? I mean, from my understanding, from what I know, um, basically, Dad asked Ti to get on one of his songs, or whatever, on the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said day. that. Yeah. So you know, Dad, you know, Ti was always claiming Bankhead. But, you know, nobody never said nothing, or my dad, and them ain't never say nothing, because they felt like, you know, it felt good for somebody to be claiming they side of town. So, you claiming Bankhead, and you doing all this and all that, but then, you know, when when the man of Bankhead asked you for something, you know, you supposed to, you know, move on that, but he didn't. So, he was just like, you know... This and that, like now nah, he don't want to do it, whatever it can be. So, so they were like, damn. So how, how the hell you, you going you know, just claim bankhead and you know, and shit. I'm, and first off, we ain't never heard of you or seen you. Yeah, nowhere. Yeah. So, but then you gonna do that? That's yeah. crazy. So that was just like, bro, you really ain't from here. We were just then you claim it, but Ti was using. My my dad cars and stuff in his video. Correct, I heard stuff. him say that. I heard the story, but it's just crazy because I just you was at that time you would have been about thirteen. Mm-hmm. You about thirteen then because this it, this is when it's boiling down. Mm-hmm. So when, during that time, also, um, I, if I remember correctly, right after that Gucci come on the scene, did you ever meet Gucci with with your dad during that time when they was hanging out? Yeah, yeah, yeah that um, would that had to be dope. Oh yeah, man! So I met um, Gucci, <laughs> man. Gucci funny and hold on, and, hold on, hold on. And which Gucci man? He met the old Gucci man, yeah. the first Gucci. Yeah, the first yeah. Gucci man, the big Gucci. So what's the difference? Well, big Gucci was real. No, no, I want him to answer. I want him to answer. I know him, you know, yeah, but I, I want him to answer the question. What's the difference? Can you actually met him? Like, well, I haven't got to meet. The new this Gucci? Gucci now, you know, the fit Gucci, yeah. workout Gucci, all that, you know, the 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 businessman Gucci. I don't know this Gucci, but I knew Gucci from back then because him and my dad used to always kick it and stuff, and they was like this. But um, so it was like me, my dad, and Gucci, we went to um, Six Flags. Me, that's dope. my dad and his partners, Gucci and his partners and stuff, and that's when Gucci was talking um, to Buffy the Body. Okay. So um, I think I was like 13. 14 in, so we walked You in. were managed then. You seen Buffy the Body, you like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so man, w- we waiting in line, and Gucci told me to slap a butt. <laughs> Damn. I knew it. So, so, got, so I was like, nah, nah, man, I ain't finna do that. You know, But you know, I'm a teen, like, I'm 13, you 13 14, 14, so I'm like, oh, man, yeah. man, I, I want to slap it, but I don't know. Yeah, so, um, so. We when, didn't tap it. He made me do it, but <laughs> see. <laughs> See, but the thing is, like, when I said no and he told me to do it again, he asked my, my dad, like, oh, man, oh, what's up with this nigga right here? Oh, what's that up sound like him, too, boy. So, got that down, like so dad was like, man, you know, man, oh, he kind of shy, man. Ooh, you know, he's still young. He know, like, 13, shy, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, got down. So, boom. So, so Gucci let me walk in front of him. So, now I'm behind, but for the body. You see all that. Man, so... He pushed me on the so <laughs> it, it, it like so <laughs> man so got now I'm grabbing her and I, now I'm from the fall trying to stop her from falling yeah. and stuff like that but the the booty <laughs> the, it hit you in the chest yeah so yeah. It's like, I'm like yeah, it was crazy so <laughs> <laughs> man Gucci crazy. Wait, wait, wait. what Gucci say he laughing 
Gucci laughing, dad laughing. laughing. I want to remember that. Man, oh no, so I ain't gonna. But oh, I'm talking about Gucci. Oh, oh, Gucci. oh, yeah, Gucci remember that. Damn, man, these niggas remember what's going on. They ain't crazy, I'm, man. I'm finna say, boy, you know, I'm, that's yeah, I know you he remember. remember. Yeah, 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 I, I, I know I done remember it. You know what I'm talking about? I would remember it too. Yeah. Yeah, oh man, God. that's crazy, man. Because those are the stories, man. I I have so many people that, because uh, Pimp is no longer here and his his uh, people that, you know, been with him, I hear all these stories, man. It's just dope. I wish I'd have got to meet Sean. I listen to every every song, everything he was doing. I was on it, man, because I love the hustle and all his music really magnified that. You know what I mean? And, it, mm -hmm. and you could tell it wasn't it wasn't fabricated; it was real. real. And, and that's what I liked. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could tell the ones who really wasn't who really wasn't getting it like that, but acting like they were getting it too, because they they give fake dope prices and all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was more about just the money and talking about you know the good time that was going on, and I like that about it. You know, I appreciate that. Yes, sir, man. Well, let's talk about about you, man. Is, is that Brick Baby? Yes. What's up with that, man? This is my actual clothing um, line. Right. So, Brick Baby. The Brick means being resourceful, intelligent, and Creative to overcome, you know, your struggles, your circumstances, or anything that you're going on in life. So, you know, I really don't look at any situation as a negative. You know, I always trying to find the positive in in each situation and find a solution in each situation. You know, I don't focus on the problem because the problem is here. So, how are we gonna fix it or solve it? But once you have been resourceful and creative, being resourceful, intelligent, and creative for for a, a long period of time that will allow you to bring riches in consistently. Hey. And you know, and I feel like this is for my hustlers, people who want something out of life, who chasing goals, who chasing dreams, you know, and I feel like that should be everybody. So everybody can be a Brit baby. Wow, that's dope, man. Mm -hmm. I'm a, hey man, I want that merch in the store, man. I'm a, I need a wholesale order. Stop playing. You see where we at? I got you. Give me a wholesale order, then I'm gonna put the word out, nigga. Dallas, Texas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 man. Thank you so much for coming to Dallas, man. I, I'm loving the movement, man. Um, so <clears throat> when when you when you you say you did some time, how long was you locked up, man? Th three years. Three years. Three mm -hmm. years. And and what did you get out of being locked up with that time that you had to? You know, um, sit down. Basically, you know, as as being a kid, you know, and like I like I ain't never gonna forget. Like I was riding in the car. It was me, my mom, and the dude that she talked to, and my um, sister. And I seen the blue bus. You know, the little bus. Yeah, riding past whatever. And and I used to always think like, what did they do to get locked up? Like, <laughs> what are they doing? You know, like why why go out and be bad? Yeah, but you know. Get older and you understand it. Then me actually going to jail and going to prison, that just allowed me to see like everybody in there ain't bad. Yeah. You know, everybody. Some people just be put in bad situations, lifestyles, circumstances. Some people just are a product of the environment and stuff happens. Some people mm -hmm. just make bad decisions. Right. So um, so um, that just allowed me just to you know just sit back and it it like. <clears throat> it allowed me to grow like like my mindset, my thought process on people who went to jail and went to prison. And just it just allowed me to be more let me find a word. Let me find a word. I'll say it allowed me to be more, you know, should aware. Pay yeah. you, you know, just pay um I said attention more. You know how to read people. And it just taught me how to be, you know, what's the word? How to be, you know, just by my, my, myself, you know, yeah, just yeah. like isolated, right? Isolated, like not to, you know, be so big on needing people, because you know, when when you go down, you go to jail or you go to prison, you really see who has your back or who gonna make time for you, or who gonna reach out or who just gonna talk to you. It's not even about the money. Who just gonna be there to talk? keep you uplifted and keep you going. And that was a, um, a lesson that my mom had taught me. She was like, sometimes you gotta learn how to be by yourself. You know, you can't depend on people all the time, you know? So sometimes when stuff get hard, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. You know, everybody ain't always be there and everybody ain't always wanna help you. And if they do, sometimes it's not all the way real. Yeah, so I get it. So she just she like you know you gotta learn how to be you know just you sometimes. So I know when you was, when you was did you have something you wanted to say? I go go ahead. 
I, like, I can tell you, you actually sit down and listen and think, thought about everything that you did. Because, like, you actually seeing what, what you did wrong, what you did right, what, what not to do, what not to do wrong. Like, you it's actually dope. see it. Right. Like, other people don't see it. They, they get out, so I'm going to go do this and do it again. Like, you actually see it. You sit down and you actually sit down and, and broke it down to where what, what you what you was actually thinking. Like, damn, I'm in GIC. Everybody ain't this. Everybody ain't that. It's like you see a different side of everybody. Mm-hmm. It's like you actually the most smartest people are in jail. And man, you know the most Bruh. smartest people are in jail. <laughs> the smartest people be. Like you, un- you understand? You'll never know. Like you, I, you put them in a situation and you give them a small thing, they are gonna come out with a big old. Like they are gonna make some out of it. Bro, yeah. they so creative. I was like, I was like, you know, I was asking people. I was like, bro, y'all so creative. What the hell? Like, why y'all didn't imply this out there? Like, bro, <laughs> see, like, yeah, like, like, see, but you don't like, like, just for me being there and seeing all this, you know, us as black people, like. We can we bro we are the entrepreneurs like we can we can really run this like because we are you know that's just saying like you you know you're a hustler don't nobody hustle harder than us no don't don't nobody hustle harder than black people period so just being that creative and that smart i'd be like man y'all guys don't know that y'all can get out here and really get to take it over but a lot of people don't know a lot of people don't know the business side and and they won't take the time to go you know learn it but now in this age you can go on google you can go on youtube and these people is explaining it to you versus back then when you know this wasn't really gotten shit available next people giving you free game the only thing you gotta do is go get it no that's no, so but true you gotta have a paperwork behind it though you yeah the paperwork they're gonna take it from you yeah that's the one that, thing we don't do black folk we don't take the paperwork behind it yeah you know, i would just go do it and then they take it from us we all complain i but agree the paperwork first and then go do it mm-hmm. yeah yeah these streets is real too and and, and i think we we are creative like you said so when you, <laughs> but when you think about it you know it's it's eye-opening man but the one thing i did notice and and because when, when i got jammed my uh my mother had passed away and uh I, when I researched it, I, I found out your mom passed and your and your father passed while you was incarcerated. Right. Um, that's um, how was it dealing with both of those incidents? If I if I might ask, if yeah, you want to sure. Talk about um, it. like losing my mom, like that hurt me the most. Yeah, like, I know. That broke me down. Like, um, just even think about it, it's just crazy. Like, cause I really don't talk about my mom, but it's like. I have no choice but to talk about that because everybody lost Yeah, him. yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't just me, but my mom, that's my baby. Like, I yeah. can't even count to you. No, no, I already know. Like, man, like, that hurt me more than anything else. How did you, how did you react? How did you, how did you react? And what did you do? And the reason I ask these questions, uh, Lo, is because it'll help somebody else who go through that. My uh, my cousin lost his mother and his dad while he was like my first cousin. Mm-hmm. We run together all the time. So I know, but I, he can't, he can't sit down like you cause he ain't, he ain't, he ain't the type of person that could do this, but somebody that's going to see this parents, they may lose their parents or something or have lost it or going through something like that. Mm-hmm. That's why I asked you about it. You know what I mean? Cause it'll help somebody else. Like man, like uh, the only thing I can say with like losing my mom, it, it wasn't nothing really nobody could tell me. Or it was just, unexpected. Yeah, it was just unexpected cause I had just, cause I had just talked to her earlier that day. Wow. I told her happy birthday and stuff and I told it her. It was on her birthday? Yeah. Wow. I told her don't be drinking and driving. And she, wow. and she said that I'm not, I got somebody who's going to drive me home. So my dad came out and surprised her and turned up her party for her. You know, he came out and did his thing and um performed with her and stuff. And then she drove my dad's sister home, but she didn't get to get home. Wow. So, you know, she passed. She passed, like, not too shortly after leaving her house because she got to a car accident the same way as dad and that's what blew my mind both my yeah. parents passed in car accidents. in car accidents yeah so um so boom so just like that and when it happened i, I didn't know so um i guess one of the guards at the on um, the prison that i was at he told my partner just to make sure i'm okay i'm good and you know at the time i don't know but i guess my parent i mean my dad or my grandma my auntie or somebody had called down to the prison already and told them to tell me so the guard just told my partner to make sure that i'm good so so my, my partner was like um hey bro you know the you guard good. you did no nah, it's not my, my he was like bro the guard just told me to make sure you're good i don't know what's going on with that bro you, you, is you good i'm like yeah here they, they he was like bro you might need to call home and see what's going on i was like man why like but 
I had just got recently got some paperwork saying that I was going home in d December and this was July. So and I called my mom a couple weeks early and told her I'm coming home in December. So I'm thinking, I'm like, but well, I know she ain't call down here and, and and tell them to just make sure I'm okay and I'm safe and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cause she would do something like that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, you yeah. Know, make sure my, my baby good. Y'all okay, like, yeah. better, y'all better watch. He coming home, so I want nobody do nothing to him type stuff. Yeah. So um. So um. So boom. So I walked upstairs and I was getting on the um the um actual jail phone and I dialed a number. I pushed it. It rang one time and I hung it up. So man, got. So I was just like, man, I ain't finna call her. You know, cause. I had set days where um, I actually called her and stuff and talked to her and stuff. Yeah. So um, I was like, you know what, bro? Some just say they call. So man, so I went back downstairs and one of my uh, partners and stuff. She, uh, she, uh, he from the um, city too. So um, he he just kept staring at me, you know. And, and I was down there playing cards and stuff. I looked up. He staring. He walked that way. He walked that way. So you know, in prison, you know, you just talk to watch how people move exactly. and how they walking and stuff. So. Um, so I, I looked at him, I'm like, bro, I don't know what's going on, are you good? He was like, yeah, yeah. But I, I could tell how he said it. I was like, so guys, I stopped playing cards, and I walked upstairs to his room. I was like, bro, what's going on? Bro, talk to him, bro, you, you got something going on? You, you, you got a feeling of some, of some type of way or something? And got, he was just like, no, nah, bro, you, you just need to call home and make sure your, um, your people's great, bro. She had many folks say on your mom pad. I was like, bro, I was like, how? Bro, so I just talked to him, man, you tripping. Boom, I call, I call under my dad, and he picked up, and I'm like, Dad, man, what's going on, man? These folks trying to tell me that mom passed and stuff, and 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 got there. Uh, he he was trying to change the subject. He was like, Low, son, what's going on? I'm like, Man, Dad, man, man, what did these folks talk about? You talking about what's going on? I mean, what's going on? And I and then he, he got quiet. I, I was just like, What? Say it ain't so. And he just, he got there. He was like, But shit, it's so. And I just lost it. Man, sh I can't even explain what it. happened after that. It's sh I just I, I couldn't even believe it, man. But when I tell you, like for for like a whole week, I ain't sleep, and I cried like every day, all day. But those guys in there really showed me love, though. Exactly. Like, like they like, bro. That's like, the way it be. God put the right people around you to deal with situations and circumstances. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, now, now, and 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 that 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 had to be hard. Now, now explain to me how it was when Shorty Low when he passed away. How you get? How'd you hear about that when you was locked up? Bro, it's crazy because I had just talked to him the night before because my granddad had just passed two weeks prior. prior. Okay, right. So my granddad passed on September sixth. So you know, um, so um, so um, he had called. No, my aunt. Cause you know we had the cell phones and stuff. So the, the cell phone that I usually use and stuff, she had texted that phone and told them to tell me to you know to call my, my dad and stuff. So I called her like, Auntie, what's going on? What the maybe? I'm like, she was like, just call your dad because he gonna be the only one who can control you and console you and all that. I'm like, man, what you talking about? She was like, just call him. So I called my dad. I'm talking. I'm like, damn, what's going on? Everybody talking crazy. Like, who, you know, I'm like, what's going on? So um. So um, he, he so he would talk to him, and he was like, "Man, you know your um, Grandpa. granddad is up there with your mom now." I'm like, "Huh?" And then you know when I thought about like what he was saying, I'm like, "Man, I'm like, bro," and you know, and me and him just sat on the phone and just cried together. You know what I mean? Wow! And now, so you lost your mama and your grandpa and your daddy. Yeah, in a year span. Within a year span. Mm -hmm. So and you were locked up all all the time. Mm -hmm. And so the whole time. Mm -hmm. Wow. So y'all got to you had you got him to console with you on that. But so so how does the news get to you about Shorty Low? And I know people probably ain't asking you these questions, but I this I just like the real, bro. No, no, bro. It's cool. So um, so um, it was it was a Wednesday. She said she said September twenty first. I ain't never Can't gonna forget. forget. It, it was a Wednesday. That was when my daddy died. The commissary actually yeah. September tw the same 21st, day. Twenty first, yeah. The commissary wow. actually come that day uh, on a Wednesday. So the, the guy who ordered me some commissary, um, or whatever, he came to my, my door and it was like five six in the morning. So they they had already called us to go to breakfast, but I ain't go. So he came back like, low, low, bro, come to the door. I'm like, bro, man, what's up? So I hopped off the bump. So I parked the door. I'm like, bro, what's going on? He was like, bro, 
you ain't gonna believe this. And I'm thinking he finna tell me like, you know, he didn't get to go to the store, so he yeah. didn't pay me this week or something like that. He was like, bro, yo dad, shit, he died, he dead. I'm like, bro, what? I'm rubbing my eyes. You like, you done heard he this stuff. You, you, you done heard all of these different transitions. Now, this. Yeah. This is two weeks apart, cause my granddad just, just passed. passed. So, so this two weeks later, so I'm thinking, I'm like, bro. So I told him, I said, man, get the fuck away from under my door, bro, you tripping. And I was about to close the door, and my other partner pulled up and gave me the cell phone. So I'm thinking, like, damn, like, they got to be real. So, so, so something going on. So um, I called my dad, mom, and my dad, ex, had picked the phone up. So she was like, hey, look, call up. But it's like 5, 6 in the morning. So I'm, like, I'm like, oh, man. So she's like, hey, what's up, what's up? I'm like, bro, what's going on? And then she was like, um, I say, man, is it true or is it ain't true? She was like, it's true. And at that moment, I actually went numb. I, you know, I ain't never felt that before. Like, I went numb. Like, I ain't feel nothing. It's like, it's just like, I was more angry or, or pissed off or like, damn. Like, what the, like, I'm like, I don't know what's going on now. It's just like everything. It's like my mind spinning, but it's like, oh, get it. It's like, man, he gone. I'm, I feel like, man, that was the last thing I had left. Yeah. You know, that's my own like, mom, granddad. And and now dad is like I ain't really too much crashing about that one. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, cause I was numb. I was just like, man. After all of that. After he done went through so much, and 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 that's the crazy part because this is something that you can't you can't you, you got to write a book, brother. You hear me? Mm -hmm. You got to write a book because it ain't that ain't that ain't something that's not normal, bro. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I look at God in the whole situation, how you said that you spoke to him not too long before that. And then with your mom, you talk to her every week. So you were able to talk to her on that. A lot of people in there and like wait months or, you know, and don't talk to their relatives and figure out that they just passed away. You were able to have that last conversation. You know what I mean? We was all close. You know, um, before my mom passed, <laughs> I got the news that I was coming home December 2015. Mm -hmm. So um, so I um, but I got that news like the early part of July, and she came and seen me the following week. And it's crazy because like when I seen her, she has um some blue um, what, what's it called? No um, I I contacts in the eye. Okay. So so her eyes were blue and stuff, and, and I'm like, mom, and like. I don't know if they got anything to do with it, but I was like, Mom, you know, you look like an angel or something, like yeah. God is or something. Yeah, I'm like, I say, Mom, look at you. So then when me and her was talking and stuff and then the other people was having a visit too, and they was like, your mom is so beautiful. Wow. She looked like an angel and stuff. Wow. I was just like, yeah, man. I was like, I ain't never seen a um, wit with these in the eyes or whatever yeah. the case may be. So it's like, on, it's like, just think about that. It just like made me think about all that, like, and I told her she looked like an angel. Then two weeks later, she an angel. She became one. Wow, that's dope, man. Like I said, your story is is, is breathtaking, man. And 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 just the way that you, you like I say, I appreciate the story, man. I appreciate you telling me what went down because that's something that, like I said, it'll help somebody else that's going through it, bro. Because people going through it, you know, I'm, most of the black men are getting locked up, and a, a lot of them are. You you seen how what the ratio was with us down there? Yeah, that man. ratio crazy, right? Man, it's really <laughs> us. It, it's us down there. Right. Like, like it, I, when you get there. You see, like this way, everybody. This way, everybody. But you know, you know, another thing that um, when you were talking about when you found out that your mom had passed and you went and you just cried, you you tear it up. Um, we were interviewing somebody else who mom passed away while I think it was Al D while he was um, in prison, and he said he couldn't cry because you had to stay tough in front of in front of everybody yeah. because I mean, you don't want to seem weak. But that's probably. And it's it's probably bad to say this, but that that that's probably the best place that I could have been when all of that was happening because it made me be strong. So what what he's saying is true, but it's like I was trying to you know keep up my but those guys that group of guys like like us in that dorm you know it was us versus you know the police or the mm -hmm. guards or whatever the case mm -hmm. you know it's us so we had that tight bond and I was cool with pretty much everybody in that dorm. So, you know, like, when mom passed, like, they was there, like, they was just, like, 
it where really nothing nobody could say. And they, they didn't knew look it. at it as weakness. They just like, right. Okay. Like, so, you know, but I ain't go out and just cry. In no, front no, of no, no, right, right, right. Like, no, like you had to, you had to go through your, uh, your yeah. time of sorrow, man. And that, that, that had to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know. So like, so sometimes they'll just come in the room and just check on you, sit with me for mm -hmm. like an hour or two, like, and nobody's saying nothing. Like, That's and, dope. And, 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 you know, and we just there and, and, um, I just used to have the pictures, like pictures of my family, and I go through all the pictures of just her, and like, damn, like I can't believe this. Like she right here, she smiling, she happy, like she's like, like she gone, like, and, and this used to drive me crazy. But it's just like, I don't know. I just felt like I was like, man, she came to me in, in a dream one time. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't never gonna forget. And in that dream, I won a million dollars, like a check. So the people was like, yeah, she won a million dollars, and I seen her. And I dropped the check. I was like, I don't care about that much. I want you. And she say, no, you got to be strong and stay strong. Pick up that check and take that money and, and, and whatever the case be. I was like, no, I ain't stand no check. And it's like in my sleep, like I can feel her hug me. Like, like I, I, I kind of felt her like I've over me. I've been there. And like, and it woke me up and I'm like, tear eyed. Like, it's crazy. I've, like, been bro, there. I, I've been the same dream. Exact same dream. I, I was like, damn, I just felt the hook like yeah. touch me, like, bro, like I. It like, woke me out of my sleep. Yeah, me too. And yeah. it's like, bro, so I felt the spirit. I was like, man. No, that's and real. I believe that dreams, all dreams have meanings. Yeah, they all have a meaning. They all come to you for a reason. Maybe that time in your life you needed that. Yeah, like her telling me to be strong, you right. know, because I it, it it didn't really matter hearing it from anybody else, nobody else, but hearing it from her, her. it was just like, okay, like I can do this. Like I can fight through it, and it's like like doing that period of time. I, I, I man, I ain't gonna lie. I was thinking about doing some crazy stuff. Like where like I was like I was just on on, on go. Yeah. But everybody in that dorm knew, so they was just like you know, little bro. Like cause it was some days like I, I'm telling you, like I didn't sleep. Like I probably get like a hour nap, wake up and I'm up all day. Yeah. And, like I ain't eating. Like it, it was like a whole. Excuse me. Yeah, it was like a whole week I ain't eat. And like people like, bro, you gotta eat, you gotta do this. I'm like, bro, I ain't got no appetite. Like, y'all, they, they, they were some on like, bro, I get it. I lost the purse, I lost that purse. But you gotta goddamn, you gotta shake it. I'm like, oh, shake it. They was like, oh, we don't mean it like that, but bro, you gotta take care of yourself, you know. That's what they would want. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, because whenever, you know, of course I never experienced what you've been going through or what you went through. But being locked up and hearing that is it a case where, you know, you know how you, you know it's true, but you really don't want to hear it in denial until you actually come out and see that she's really not right there. there. And that's key because it's like, you know, from being locked up and, and being in jail and prison and stuff, and you know, they really not really there anyway. Right. But you can call every now and then. So it was just like, it was not, it was just like, okay, so I can't call her. Right. So eventually... That's what I made myself believe. Like, you know, so I just can't call her right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So got down. So when I finally got home, you know. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about that, like coming home to a whole different situation than what you left. Right. How and did? How, how was, was that? that? How I mean, was it coming back into it was uh, like society? Like leaving, you know, and, and like, you know, I, I was locked up when I was 19. I got out when I was 22. 22. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. you know. Just leaving from that, like I had both my parents, I had like a life. And your grandpa. Set up, yeah, granddad, you know, mm -hmm. he played a big role in my life too. So it's just like coming back, you know, like when, by the time I lost dad, I was already numb. So it's like, it, nothing didn't phase me, like no more. So I, I was like, I was just stone cold. Like, it's like, okay, it is what it is by that time. So by the time I came home, I was I was happy to be home, but that that's when it started to hit me. Like, like, damn, like, Okay, like I'm expecting to come home, and I, these are the people that I want to see. They would mm -hmm. embrace you. Yeah, they would like like well, we all could have grabbed yeah. each other and just cried together. They like, would pick I'm, you up. Yeah, so you know, but it was my, my brother, my girl that at that time, my brother girl, and two of my aunts and stuff. So um, so um, when, when, like when they came and picked me up, and I was walking out the gates and stuff, you know, I was happy to see them, and you know, it was like damn, like you know, I'm free, like. It's like on free and you know my day ones I ain't here on my day one out. Wow. So, so uh, you know like I, I changed clothes. We, we went and got food and stuff, and you know they took me to the grave site to see my um, mom. 
And and I ain't gonna lie, I really didn't have no feeling. Like yeah, you already done went through so much. Like it's like I, I was there. I looked at that ground for about two minutes. I was just like, all right, come on, so I'm ready to go. And that was like, you good? I'm, I'm good because my, my mind, I was, I was, I, my heart is, you know, it, stone it, cold. It was already stone cold because after, after losing that, shit, I went numb. So shit, after that, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Like, don't nothing phase me. But after being home for a period of time, that's when it started to hit. Started to affect you. Like, it's like, oh shit, like, bro, they really not here. Like, they really gone or or this and that. And then that's when a little envy started to kick in like cause I see people older than me 40s and 50s Got and they parents they parents I'm like man you sound familiar <laughs> I'm, I'm like bro I'm like bro God like why me like shit you know these four old and they got their parents their parents still here and, it, and the first thing that everybody do is blame God no I'm not I ain't really blame I'm just like why, why me you know I'm like I, I'm like I ain't never been no bad person or my parents went bad people you know we help people we love people we you know my dad and my mom did a lot for people I'm just like why so, you know, and I see kids, shit, with they parents and stuff and babies and stuff. You know, I ain't like that. I'm like, man, what, what the, what? I'm like, and, and crazy thoughts start going through my head. Like, you know what? I say, I, just, I, just, I really just want people to see how I feel. I was, I was like, boy, wow. I want to do something. Do something to everybody so everybody can see how I feel. You, you know, know feel and, what you feeling. Yeah, but, you know, but eventually I. Snapped out of it. What changed I, your mind from all of that? Okay, you know. After being home for a certain period of time, um, my girl at that time, you know, um, me and her, she was, you know, she was with me. So, you know, she was trying to pick me up, help me find jobs, do this and do that. Like, she was basically taking care of me. But as as all of the realities started to hit me, um, I started being more rebellious. Mm-mm. Bad, like evil towards her, like mm-hmm. like I talk down on Probably you. That's what her. I mean. That's you know? what I meant. Like woo woo, like this and that, and I was making her feel bad, and I, and I was tearing her down as a woman, and she wasn't trying to do nothing because you for were me. hurting. Yeah, yeah, I was hurting, and you know, and she was always around, so it's like this energy was just, you know, draining. We could go to her, mm-hmm. so eventually, you know, she left, and once she, you know, that that probably be the best thing that ever happened to me, because once. She left. I was like, I can't lose nobody else close to me, and wow. it, and it, it made me change. It, it, it and 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 it basically made me change my mindset, my points of view, the way I see life, mm-hmm. the way that I see people, the way that I move, and it just made me be more positive, you know, and just grind, you know, and just get what I want. Cause it's like having her, and she was doing everything for me. Kind of like. Like it's like she was your crush, crutch, right? Mm-hmm. So when she left, I, I just had to fall had all the way be, down, right? Then but, and get back up. Let me ask you about uh, the dream. You had a dream. Mm-hmm. You say that that you needed to start rapping. Was that your your father came to you? Right. Yeah. So um, did, how long ago was that after you had gotten home? It was a long time after. Yeah. Um. Because I got home in 2016, and recently, um, November. November twenty third of twenty twenty, I got locked up for violation of probation. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um, so um, January the fourth, J- January the fifth, I-, I had court. My dad came to me to January the fourth, and um, he was like, "Man, get the music a hundred percent. You gonna make it?" He said, "But you got to give it a hundred percent." He said, "Tomorrow That's this year, yeah, January, yeah. January." Okay. So he was like, "Um, tomorrow." You're not going home, but when you go, make sure that you get the music 100%. You're going to make it, and I'm going to put the pieces around you to make it, but you ain't going to make it just because you my son. You got to give 100 just like everybody else. And, you know, so the next day came, and I didn't go home. Um, So I ended up coming home February the 12th, if I'm not mistaken. So... I already, you know, I was dibbing and dabbing with the music before I had done got um, locked up. I made some songs or make a song, and I ain't really put it out. Because before, back in 2017, my brother was rapping. I ain't never rapped before. I ain't never thought about rapping. So yeah. I was trying to manage him. And and, um, and it was basic, basically like just losing pops did something different to him. 
And, you know, he was burning a lot of bridges. I'm mm. like, I was like, hell no. Nah. I was like, you know, we're we losing our opportunity. Like, we still got to live out here. And there's people that want to help us. But you, you, you flipping out and you doing this now. I'm like, no. Nah. I say, I say, bump that shit. I'm finna rap. But at at that time, I wasn't good. And I knew that I wasn't good. I, I Honestly, I still don't feel like I'm good now. But people think no, I'm good. I like so. it. I like it. I listen to the songs that you have released. Mm-hmm. So um, so at that time, you know, the people around me was like, "Yeah, bro, you shot a little son. You can just put out anything." So I'm like, "I ain't finna put out on anything." Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. I was like, "No." But then the people that I, you know, got to suspect it, you know, to help me and groom me was the same people who was around that and who was helping him, and you know, and nobody wanted to help me. So and then you know, like I was doing like crazy stuff. Like I was so dedicated and I had my mind made up that the music was the way I was gonna do. Like I'll spend my last to Uber to the studio to pay for the pay for a studio session and not have a way home. Wow. Like I ain't know how I was gonna get back home. I was like, man, so I call somebody and be and be going on my call law and then somebody finally come pick me up and take me back to the house. So um so um so it got to that point to where I was just like, Okay. Um so my uncle Stunt, he got like a studio in his apartment so you know shit I was going over there and I was asking people to show me how to record myself mm-hmm. like just show me the button to push to make it got them record me and then I can stop it and would you believe that nobody didn't even want to and nobody won't help you show me how to do that yeah that's that's because the, that's just God just making you stronger the whole while because you you know it, it, once he teaches something and show you something ain't nobody can take it from you and there may be some unique way he wants you to do it and, but it was crazy. No, <laughs> like, I couldn't believe nobody wouldn't come in there and show me how to push a button to record myself because I ain't had the money to keep Ubering and paying for studio time. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not really that good. So I already practice over here and, you know, and do this. Nobody didn't want to show me how to push a button. So, you know, I was like, the people that I expect to support me, they ain't helping me. And then, wow. and then the people that I don't really care about, they telling me to put out anything. So I fell back from the music. Yeah, I'm like you know, and I ain't, I ain't, I ain't doing it. So I mean, I got me a job, and I did sales and marketing and, and, and stuff, and I did good in that. But I broke my own foot, and I couldn't work, and I lost my job and stuff. And I went through a whole spill with doing that. Wow. So, so then, um, so then, um, afterwards, afterwards, that's when I got locked up for violation of probation. I was actually finna move into the house that I'm in now, and I went down to change my um paperwork over, and they locked me up, told me that. I had a warrant. Wow. So um so dad came in a dream. He told me that I got out. I was working on music, but I was still kind of nervous. I was like, man, I don't want to put on no bullshit, but I wonder if people going to like it. And one of my, my dad partners, he said, play something for me. And I played my song out now, the single. The Bricks. Bricks, I played Bricks. He say, man, he started, he say, man, you tripping. He say, man. You better put this out. He was like, man, the people gonna got nothing wrong with you, but it's hard. He was like, and you say that you ain't never rap before. You ain't never, he was like, but you lying to me. He was like, but this good music right here. So, man, uh, so he actually made the, that cover that's on my Instagram now. Yeah. Um, And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I dropped Brits April the 24th. And it's been up since then. Man, I see you, you on different platforms, man. The, the interviews, the people that that's embracing you. And I just like the whole movement. I think it's it's, it's something else. Um, they ain't did a. Uh, they need to do a growing up hip hop and throw you on that pl- mm-hmm. thing somewhere. Let mm-hmm. you get that money all kind of ways because it's there for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, doors are gonna open, man. And you just gonna have to be prepared to go with it, like that hundred percent thing. Your daddy right about that. Anything you do, you got to give it all. Don't exactly. do it at all. So what other um, cause fields you would like to branch out into? Because I know you're doing the music. And the shirts. And the shirts. But I know being a, um, a brand, you might want to do movies. You want you might want to do you know, a book and there's different things. Um, Have you thought about any of those? Um, yes, actually. Um, I actually started my own label, um, D4L Reloaded. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I basically basically started that because I felt like I ran into some bad business. Um, some people were just trying to tell me, I can give you this amount of money. I can get you on birthday bags, Coachella, Matt Geller, you know, just all type of stuff. 
And you know, my instinct was telling me like, nah, these folks capping or whatever they can be. But they gave me the paperwork and I was trying to wait to see if they can get me on the, um, which one came first? Um, birthday badge came up first. So, you know, I ain't signed on paperwork or none. And until I see like they can do what they say they're going to do. So when birthday badge was coming up, I seen all the other artists posting they flyers and doing this and doing that and whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm asking them like, where my eyes at? Like, or uh, where the paperwork at the contract so I, we can see what's going on and blah, 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 blah. And, and um, he was just like, yeah, man, it's on the way. The radio station's still doing it. Woo, woo, woo. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, but I ain't signed no paperwork anyway. So, like, about a week or so before birthday badge came up, he was like, man, they gave away the, the um, slide and did all this and that. Man, I'm, I'm on the phone with him now. Woo, 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 woo. I was like, you know what? Versus me trying to look to get signed, I'll start my own label and mm. I'll sign on it myself and then I can help people because I know I'm 100. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, you know, I ain't trying to get over on nobody or do nothing shysty to nobody. I just want to see people win. And like I tell the people around me, I can't promise nobody success, but I can promise you an opportunity to create your own lane and do whatever it is you want to do and help change your future and your family's future. I can promise awesome. you success. And it's only right because that's that's the same way your pops was. So you know you want to you want to make sure that you uh, give yourself every opportunity to create that lane so that you know what I mean. So you be able to help more people mm-hmm. do more. The more people you can help, the better off it is. Right. Exactly. You know. So man, I appreciate you, man. Uh, is there mm-hmm. any more thing? Anything else you got to ask? No, that's it. And uh, hey, man, how can people get a hold of you, man? Man, man um, you can follow me on IG dash Shawty Low underscore Junior. That's S H A W T Y L O underscore. JR, you can find my music on all platforms. Wherever they have music, you can find my music. Um, my singles out right now, Charlotte Lowe Jr., Brits, Charlotte Lowe Jr., I'm with it. Charlotte Lowe Jr. featuring Schooly. Um, That's the one I've seen too. Every time. Yeah. That would go hard. And um, every time. Top forgot three to artists. ask you top three artists of all time. We that are every like year any year. genre. My top three. Number one. Number one is Future. I ain't gonna lie, so I love Future. Love Future. Okay. Future. Um, Number two. Drake. Number Drake. three. Dad. Hey, man, that's dope, man. Hey, man, we love you, brother. Thank you. We appreciate you, you for coming on the show. Yes, sir. I yes, sir. Uh, oh, you got another question? Okay. I got another Let one. that man go. So, if you had to, if you had to go back and advise a young man, um, say about sixteen years old, who about to face some time in prison you know what i mean say even face eight years because when you go you say eight like that ain't a lot that's a lot but when you're facing eight that don't mean you're gonna do the whole you eight, might not get right. that you know yeah. so you don't, depends on the state you're in right yeah. but um and he left with his mom and dad there you never know what might happen in life you know how could you advise him what to face coming up you really can't you know, because his life going to be different from mine and the things that he might experience and feel it's going to be different from what I felt and I got to experience. And the people around him, I don't know how they'll try to help him and guide him. Um, the, the only thing I can say is you like you like eventually once you, you know, had time to grieve, you just got to know what you want out of life and go get it. Like at that time, I ain't know what I wanted, you know. Like before my dad passed, me and him was talking and I was telling him that I'm gonna come out and help him start businesses and his restaurant and finish writing his book and start on the movie. Like me and him had plans mm-hmm. and had goals and you know, and that just got shattered. He left. So I didn't know what I was gonna do, you know. And when and when and when I got out and I came home, you know, and and I had to stay with my aunt and her dude. And eventually, he put me out. So I was homeless for a while. Wow. I was living here, living there. And, you know, I was shot a little son. He felt like, well, yeah, you shot a little son. You scraped. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, nah. Sure, it I don't work scrape. like that, you know dude. What I mean? I mean, but it, it, it was just like that. But it was like I just had to stay rooted and grounded. It is like my pride and my ego didn't let me go under. I was like, you know, I, I really can't be, you know, like this. Like, because... I just got pride in me. Like, I ain't finna be homeless. I'm not finna do it in there. Hell no. Nah, so, I'm gonna go get it. You know, so, shit, I found jobs. And so, you know, I ain't I ain't really have no pride in that sense of I can't work. You know, my first job, I was making seven twenty five an hour. 
Man. And you know, so and that ain't really nothing when you got bills, you got this, mm -hmm. you got that, you got to provide for yourself. That ain't nothing. But you know, I like I had learned how to manage money, how to live better, be like consistent and be and like tell myself, you know, it's certain stuff that I can't do, and th th that's okay. See, your dad told you in a dream that you got to get it on your own. Right. You you can't, and that's a good thing, you know, because. I've heard of so many famous rappers who passed on and wasn't able to leave their kids anything, and their kids are not in a great situation right now, mm -hmm. except from just having that name. And you have a lot of mean people out there who will say, oh, but you such and such son, you shouldn't be, you know, what you doing working here? What you doing doing that? You know, they expect you to, to have money, to be living good off of your dad's name, or you know what I mean? People. People have said that, and you know, and and you know, and I just tell them, you know, should I be real? That's him on me, you know. So I'm grinding and I'm doing my own thing, you know. So I, I feel like I need to work. I'm gonna work. So, so I'm working and I'm doing that, and I love that that that. I like it. That's cool, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Dope interview, man. It's been a, another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.